Hello everybody. The subject of the video will be about uh, will be foundations, foundations of buildings. I have given you theoretical information about the foundations uh, in the course in the class, last class. And today we will uh, talk about how we represent foundations with architectural drawings. But before uh, talking about the foundation plan of our building, let's give some theoretical information about the foundations. Uh, firstly, let's write foundation here and let's categorize it into two. We have got shallow foundations and deep foundations. Okay, let's start uh, by naming some deep foundations. What do we have? Basically, we have piles and we have got caissons. Okay, and when do we use deep foundation? Let's assume that this line represents natural ground line. Okay, and this box that I draw here represents a three-story building with two basement floors. Okay, the foundation of this building needs to be located here. But what if the strong ground, okay, strong ground, or alternatively, we can call it as firm ground level is much deeper than the depth of our building. In other words, we just have one and a half or two basement floors. But in order to put the foot of this building, we need to excavate the ground like this. Okay, and then we need to refill all this space for our building's foundation to be to our building's basement floor to be placed. In these kinds of situations, we do not excavate the entire ground. We excavate the ground like this. Okay, just excavate it enough. Uh, height to uh, which is going to be enough for our basement floors and then we open some holes here and into these holes we have got reinforcement bars and concrete in other words these are now reinforced concrete piles Okay, over these piles, we usually construct a raft foundation again, but this time the raft foundation will act as a transfer plate. The weight of this building that we have here will be transformed to the strong ground by the help of these piles. Okay, that's the first type of deep foundations. Okay, also sometimes the strong ground may be more deep maybe somewhere there, instead of here. In that case, what we do, we do not construct the piles that deep because between the perimeter of the piles and the ground, a friction force will start to occur anyway. Okay, so what the civil engineers do, they calculate this friction force occurring between the perimeter of the piles and the ground and they make the building float inside the uh, or float on top of the piles and we call these types of piles as friction piles okay what if so, so that's almost all about uh pile pile foundations for an architect this is enough but for an architect we may be need to know a little bit about caisson foundations as well. Let's say that we are going to construct a building over sea. Okay, let's assume that it is a bridge. Like the bridges of Bosphorus. Okay, and here is the bottom of the sea. 
Okay, you know that the bottom of the sea is too soft even uh, to be used as a proper strong ground for a human body. That's why it will not be a good idea to directly start constructing the foundation there. Okay, so that because whenever we start constructing the foot of our bridge on top of our foundations, it will sink down. Okay, so what we do, we firstly uh, have a driller ship come here. Okay, they open drill holes and they again put piles there. Okay, so lots of piles they have. Okay, and they put piles here also. Okay, lots of piles. Okay, and then they in the ground, okay, let's say that it is soil here, we construct a bucket made of reinforced concrete. Okay, the construction of that bucket needs to have a dry pool, but anyway, whenever we finish constructing this bucket made of reinforced concrete, this is a very large one, uh, large and heavy one, uh, we are going to take out this set and we are going to tie it to our boat and we are going to bring our reinforced concrete bucket right over uh, the sea on top of the piles below it. Okay, and then we fill it with water. Okay, and it starts to sink. It will sink down like this, like that. And at last it's going to sit over our piles. And then we are going to construct the legs of our bridge okay, on top of those things. Now this thing is a foot, a foundation for our bridge, bridge's leg. Okay, and we are going to call it as a caisson foundation. Okay, so these will be enough for you at this stage okay, to know about deep foundations. Let's divide it like this. Okay, and now let's talk about shallow foundations. It's the foundation type that you will use uh, more in your professional lives. You will encounter with more in your professional lives. And we say that shallow foundations can be categorized into three. We have got pet foundations. We have got strip foundations. And we have got raft foundations okay and what we do basically let's draw an area uh, an arrow here okay and what will I write here is from pet to raft the thing which is changing in fact is the foundation area the total area of the foundation increases Okay, so the foundation with the largest surface area is raft foundation. Okay, whereas at the same time, and we go from the pet foundation to raft foundation, as the area of the foundation increases, the pressure applied to the ground. decreases okay so now that we have a large raft uh, in raft foundations now that we have a large surface area and the weight of the building is constant let's assume that the weight of our building is constant then the when you increase the foundation area the pressure applied from the, your building to the ground is going to decrease that's what's happening in uh, different kinds of sh shallow foundations okay but let's draw very schematically these foundations okay let's assume that these boxes are representing our columns okay so basically the first thing that we ha need to have 
in a pet foundation is a single large pet underneath each of the column. Okay, it is like a leg, the column is the leg, and the pet foundation is the foot. And we will tie them to each other with bone beams. Here are the bone beams. Okay, these are just tying the pets to each other. Okay, what about the section of it? Let's draw a section passing from here and looking to this side. We are going to have our pet foundation here standing like that on the side and on the other side we are going to have the other pet foundation and we will tie them to each other with our bone beam let's place that and we are going to have our column on top of them okay and the last thing that we need to show is the bone beams in section these are the bone beams in section okay so this is what we call as pad foundation the second type of foundation is called a strip foundation let's have our same columns here here one more here and the last one is here okay now we are going to enlarge the pads here to the same width and same height with the pads we are going to make larger bone beams instead of calling it like that we can call that we are going to tie pads to each other with foundations as large as the pads okay so it will be like this what about the section the section of it from here let's say that this time let's use bb the bb section will look like this we are going to have our strip foundation in section and we are going to have our other strip foundation in section and in the background we are going to have our strip foundation in elevation and here are the columns okay I draw it a little bit bad they don't come onto each other but let's say that this thing that we have here is right here okay this is that and that one is here okay and let's color match these lines with here this line is that line okay that's what we call strip foundation and then the third type of foundation is the raft foundation which with the largest surface area let's draw our columns here again like this like that okay this time all of these columns will be tied to a single gigantic pad which is going to look like this okay and the section of it will be seen like this and in the elevation we are going to have our columns again okay, and let's say that this time you see this is CC section and this is a plan okay you may ask what are we going to have here we have got soil filling here we are going to fill back that space with soil of course Okay, so this is the theoretical information that I'm going to give to you. 
Now let's implement this theoretical information uh, into a steel structured building. Okay, let's pass like this. Okay, in steel structured buildings, when we are working on the foundations of them, we need to remember that touching or letting the steel members of the building directly to the soil will not be a good idea. We don't want our steel members, especially if it is a steel structural member, we certainly would not like that member to touch the soil because of what? Because of corrosion. Okay, so steel will rust if it touches to soil. Okay, so we need to prevent uh, the steel members of our building to touch the soil. What steel members do we have in a steel structured building? We firstly have steel columns and we have got steel beams. So we need to find a way of preventing this from touching to soil. Okay. So for doing this, we have got two options. Okay. The first option is this. Let's assume that this line that we have here is representing ground. This is ground line. Okay. Now, in our first option, what we can do is, let's assume that blue is reinforced concrete and orange is steel. In the first option, what we will do is we are going to construct the substructure of our building, in other words, the parts of our building which is below ground level entirely in reinforced concrete. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a reinforced concrete raft foundation. We have got reinforced concrete columns and we have got usually, this is not a must, but usually we have got reinforced concrete beams. Okay, but professor, you told us that this building will be in steel. It will be a steel structured building. Yes, I told that, but I didn't tell you the start point of the steel structure, which means that the steel structure is going to start above the ground line. Okay, so basically the reinforced concrete column coming from the foundation is going to change into a steel column above the ground floor. That's the first option, okay? constructing all parts of the building under the ground in reinforced concrete material or uh, with reinforced concrete material and we are going to continue the building in steel above the ground line. This is something which is used very very usually, okay? but even though it is used that uh, fluently, that usually, Still, this is not the civil engineer's best option because what they say is column is a continuous object. It acts continuously, but in these buildings, we change the material of it. Okay, it starts in steel and it continues in reinforced concrete. Okay, which means that especially under the effect of a wind, the wind and earthquake load, dynamic load, it may be 
affected more negatively or it is hard to design and dimension uh, for civil engineers. Okay. But still, this is more cost effective. This is easy to detail. So that's the most common option that architects and clients usually want. So the majority of the steel structured buildings will have uh, one of these types. In the lectures, I have shown you an image which demonstrates these types of buildings in ITU um, Massa campus. Okay. Uh, let's look at the second option, which may be counted as the civil engineer's best, cho best choice. Okay. So let's draw again a line here, which is representing the ground line. Okay, and what will we do now? We are going to construct two different structures. And they are going to use a common piece. Okay. And the first structure that we will construct will be a swimming pool. You know swimming pools. Okay, so this is a swimming pool. If we fill the inside of it, with water, then we can swim here. Okay, but in fact, this is the common piece which will be used by our swimming pool and the building. Whereas the walls of our swimming pool will be our basement walls. Okay, they will be shear walls okay. and of course they will be made of reinforced concrete okay please remember what was the function of shear wall we have soil here and we don't want that soil to fall down into our building similarly we have soil there and we want that soil to be held in its place okay so these walls now that we have here is going to keep these soil in their places and prevent them to fall into our building okay and then what will we do we are going to construct our steel structured building right into this pool okay like this okay now we have a steel column here okay and that steel column continues as a steel column until the foundation and these are steel beams and steel beams the reason why this is the best option best choice of civil engineers is because our continuous column which continues from the top of the foundation to the top level of the building continues in steel until the roof okay so basically we choose one of these two alternatives okay of course this one is hard to detail i already told you that why is it hard to detail because of these parts okay you see that part the basement wall and our column is not coming onto each other, which means that right at this point, we have a gap to be filled with a floor, with a building element. And filling that building element with a floor is not that easy. Usually what we do, we construct these types of cantilevered floors all around our building. Okay, and it is going to increase the costs, like I have already told, and it's going to be hard for the architect to detail design. By the way, here is a question. What is the name of these pieces that we place below the steel columns and that is used to tie a steel column to a reinforced concrete component okay what is the name of this and what is the name of that K 
Okay, so in your drawings, I want you to you to tell them. Okay, now let's pass to our building. As I have told you during the lectures, you will draw a foundation plan for our building. I'm going to upload the uh, schem schematic plan drawing of our building, of the building that we will work until the end of the term and you will see that it is very simple with the very similar with the building that we have worked about i have shown it to you during the lecture so basically we have a room here a bathroom there and the entrance door is here so previous term we directly enter into the building and we find the uh, bathroom right next to us now what I did is I have placed a stair to this corner point of the building. With that stair, we will reach to the basement floor that I have added this term. So basically it will be something like this. Okay, we are going to reach the upper level okay again we have the kitchen counter here we enter the uh, room there and we enter the bathroom from here we have a window here we have another window there maybe a door here we'll see and we have a window there and another window for the bathroom okay so entrance hall bathroom bedroom kitchenette or open kitchen and we have got salon here Maybe like we did last term, we are going to add a veranda there. Okay. And you will see that like we did last term, we are going to have the vertical structural members of our building. Right at these points. But unlike the previous term, in the ground floor of our building, we won't have any reinforced concrete column okay so what we want in the ground floor we want to have steel columns and i have also told you that half of the class is going to work on the first option and the other half is going to work on the second option. And everybody, as always, is responsible uh, for both alternatives. So those of you who say that, no, I will not talk with a friend, work together with a friend. Uh, I'm going to be a one-man band. I, will, I want to learn everything by myself without the need of a friend to work with then maybe it will be a good idea to draw both alternatives after you watch this video. Okay, let's now draw the first option. Very faintly, I will draw here my building. Here is the building. Okay, and as you know, we are working about the foundation plan. In the first option, what will we have? We are going to have in the first option, we are going to have reinforced concrete columns in the basement floor, which means that in the foundation plan, we are going to see reinforced concrete columns. Okay, so let's draw our reinforced concrete columns here. Okay. Unlike last term, as you see, I'm not drawing my columns in any rectangular shape. I'm drawing them in square shape. Because in steel structured buildings, earthquake resistance is going to be realized with braces. And we don't need any shear columns okay that's why usually uh, and there's another reason that we need to use square columns i have told you that we 
have age profiles in steel structured buildings which are going to work as a column okay this is what we have like this okay and the column will be placed on top of a base plate and as with the base plate the column will be tied to reinforced concrete column in other words as we are going to bolt the base plate to the reinforced concrete column and as an H profile this is the let's call that HD column profile you know that HD column profiles used to have or uh, they usually have the same size they are more like a square and that's why our base plate is going to be a square as well please remember that during the lecture I have told you that the base plate is around 5 centimeters larger than the column size which means that if our HD column profile is an HD okay is 30 by 30 okay here it is 30 and here it is 30 again we add 5 here 5 years this size is going to be 40 the total size of the base plate and this size is going to be another 40 as well okay this is the size of our base plate and the base plate will be placed on top of a reinforced concrete column and as reinforced concrete material is a brittle material what we want is we want the reinforced concrete column to be slightly larger than the steel base plate okay which means that what is that slightness you may ask all of these need to be calculated by the civil engineer of course okay but let's assume that it is 2 2.5 centimeters larger in all directions let's make the size of the columns 25 by 25 centimeters okay so these are that column that we have here okay and remember I have told you something here I told that we have soil here and in order to keep that soil away from our basements basement floors basements okay we need to have a wall there okay so what we need to do we need to have that same walls here in this alternative as well because in this alternative we also have soil here and there and we also do not want that soil to fall into our basement floors that's why what you need to do is you need to tie these reinforced concrete columns to each other by basement walls oh sorry this line just not right oh sorry let's throw it from scratch okay so these are my basement walls okay but be careful let's write the name of it the name of this is reinforced concrete basement wall 
What about the name of this? This is reinforced concrete column. Okay, let's highlight these words here, reinforced concrete and reinforced concrete. Okay, so if reinforced concrete touch to another reinforced concrete, we accept them to be whole if they are tied to each other with their reinforcement bars as well. And these are tied to each other. Okay, but there's something called stirrups. I guess it is written like that. I'm not very clear, very sure now. No, it should be like this. Okay, we have got straps in reinforced concrete columns and we do not have straps in basement, reinforced concrete basement walls. What do I try to mean? From a perspective, as these walls and these columns are made of same material, they will become a whole and these lines will not be necessary. But from a different perspective, the reinforcement parts inside this reinforced concrete column and reinforced concrete basement floor will be different than each other. That's why maybe it will be better to represent this as well. So what I will do now, I'm firstly going to erase these lines. Okay, I'm going to erase all these lines. I'm, I'm going to make the columns and basement walls a whole piece of something anyway concrete is cast into them at the same time okay and let me redraw it with blue okay, so this is my basement wall like this going all the way around the building the bell is ringing for whom to bell tolls, I guess. Is there anyone who is interested in Metallica? For whom the bell tolls. It used to be a song which I listen to, which I like listening to. Today after the, I finish with this drawing. I'm going to listen to it. Okay, so this will be how it will be seen because columns and walls, they are a whole. Concrete is casted at the same time. Okay, but as I have told you, due to the absence of stirrups in basement walls, they are working differently. So in order to represent that, they are not... Okay, I need to answer that. Okay, I'm back here. Uh, what we need to do, we need to put here some dotted lines, some dashed lines, which is representing that they have got different reinforcement bar inside. Okay, so what will we do? Okay, let's make something interesting. In this one, Let's say that we have a strip foundation. Let's write it whole. Okay. By the way, did we forget something here? Do we have the foundation drawn? Not yet. We just draw the reinforced concrete columns. And we have got basement walls. Okay. And what we need to do, we need to have our foundation. And you know that foundations are extended out of the columns. Like this. Like that. Like this. And like that. And why not having a strip foundation? Okay, can't steel structured buildings have strip foundation? Why not? They can. It depends on the civil engineer's calculations. If he or she finds out that strip foundation surface area is enough for carrying our building, then we can use a strip foundation, of course. Okay. 
Okay, so we are almost finished. What will we have here? We are going to have soil, probably. Or we may have reinforced plastic formworks there as well. Okay, but at this stage, let's say that we fill these spaces with soil filling. Okay, and what do we have here? We have got reinforced concrete strip foundation. What are we going to have here? We are going to have again reinforced concrete strip foundation. And what is this that we have there? This is also, of course, reinforced concrete strip foundation. Okay? Now, in order to make it more clear, let's draw a section. An AA section. A a section by the way this is our foundation plan what's the scale it is not scaled yet okay so as some of you do not have any technical drawing equipment for this term i accept uh, unscaled architectural drawings okay but don't forget that I'm going to look for pro pro proportional drawings okay now let's draw let's draw a section okay let's put some guidelines firstly okay and we have that dash and what will I do I will draw my foundations firstly strip foundations in section okay and with faint lines I'm going to draw the elevation lines and of course what do we have right here the section plane cuts the basement wall and it cuts the basement wall at these two points as well okay so these things that I draw here are basement walls now I'm going to use a different color I'm going to use my orange colors because my section plane is passing from here and as you see it we are going to see a corner point right at this point we are going to see corner points here and corner point there. Here are the elevation lines for those corner points that I talk about. Okay, so this is the end of our section. Okay. And what things do we have here? We have got our reinforced concrete strip foundation there. This is also a reinforced concrete strip foundation. Surprisingly, this is also a reinforced concrete strip foundation. And we have got again reinforced concrete strip foundation there in parentheses in elevation. That's right. That's in elevation. Okay. And we have got reinforced concrete strip foundation in elevation here as well. What about this thing that we have there? That's the reinforced concrete basement wall. And we have got a reinforced concrete basement wall here as well. And this one here is the reinforced concrete column in elevation. Again, see it. Section plane doesn't cut it. Okay, and this is also a reinforced concrete column in elevation. Okay, and this is also a reinforced concrete column in elevation. What I want you to do is I want you to draw, let's turn this upside down like that. Okay, I want you to draw a section from here as well. Let's title that section as a BB section. 
Okay, and let's carry those lines here. Okay, and and we have got more dash. Basically, it is going to be a very similar section drawing with the previous one. elevation lines and we are again going to have our basement walls on the perimeter of our building and again we are going to have the elevation lines for our columns like this okay and let's name this as a BB1 it's a section okay that's in fact the second drawing of the page uh, but let's not lose time to try to re-explain these naming okay that's all for the first option okay we are finished with the first options foundation plan now what I will do be careful I didn't say that in this option we can only use strip foundations I didn't tell anything like that okay I have just choose this one to be strip foundation it could be a rough foundation as well okay and we are going to use a rough foundation in the second option Okay, so let's write that the second option is a one with a raft foundation. Again, let's put it in a box and let's write that this is the second option. Okay, and what will we do? Okay, we are going to draw our pool firstly. Okay, here is our pool, pool's wall. You please remember that in the second option, we construct our steel structure building into this pool. Okay, I nickname it as a pool. It could be used as a pool, but it is certainly not a pool. It is a thing which is constructed to be able to place a steel structured building inside okay so what will I do I'm going to draw these lines here 25 centimeters in thickness of a reinforced concrete basement wall shear wall surrounding the entire building okay let's draw it it's blue again please be careful are we going to have any reinforced concrete columns touching to our walls? No, we don't. That was in the first option. In the second option, the columns of the building is still from the start and until to the end, until to the top level of the building continues to have steel columns okay we used brown for the foundation and here is the foundation lines okay the foundations need to be enlarged inside the building okay so let's write it here. Okay, what do we have here? We have got reinforced concrete raft foundation. Okay, and it is continuous. Let's write it a second time. Okay. And now it is time to place our steel columns. 
what will I do in order to tie my steel column to the reinforced concrete draft foundation firstly I need to place my my what? my steel base plates okay so these boxes are in elevation and they are plates made of steel and they are bolted to the foundation here are the bolts okay symbolically let's draw them to make you understand that they are bolts they are bolted base plates and now I will take a different color okay let me take my fountain pen and let me draw here my age profiles remember age profiles column profiles being placed okay I didn't like this one it needs to be larger like this okay so I have welded my age profiles to the steel base plates okay and what do I have here I've got my reinforced concrete basement wall okay what do I have here this is also my reinforced concrete basement wall okay what about its thickness let's talk a little bit about dimensions okay this thickness is 2.5 25 centimeters okay what about the size of the base plates I guess we have calculated them to be 40 by 40 centimeters okay what about the age profiles okay it is an HD 260 I guess was the one uh, code of it okay which is around 30 by 30 in size okay and what is that by the way that's a steel column and this is a steel column okay let's write it full as well okay and this is also a base plate steel base plate let's repeat it once more what about that that's a steel base plate okay and finally what is that that's a reinforced concrete basement wall I can't stop myself but writing that this is also the reinforced concrete raft foundation okay let's draw a section here okay and let's this time number it to two section what will we do we are going to draw a raft foundation a single gigantic foot okay and when we come to here okay let's color match them we have got our basement walls here and there and we've got our foundation continues that way Okay, and let's put here a dashed and dotted line dashed and dotted line and let's draw these here okay which are representing the base plates okay and the bolts which are tying them to ground okay and on top of my base plates what do I have I have got my steel columns up like that okay and let's put a dash down dotted line here as well okay and let's start writing names this is reinforced concrete raft foundation 
This is reinforced concrete basement wall. This is steel base plate. And what about that? That is steel column. Okay, also we have a steel column here. Also a steel base plate there. And we also have a RC basement wall here. Okay, what about this thing? That is of course the RC raft foundation. And this is the name of it. It's a section. Okay, and this is the name of this. That's a foundation plan. Okay, on scale. Okay, and I will draw a second section passing from here. This time I'm going to number it as three. Okay, and very simple now I believe that you are going to draw it as simply as I draw it okay it's really really easy okay, and we have got our basement walls here and the raft foundation there and base plate here base plate there I am going to draw an elevation right of this corner there. Okay, I will draw it with my lead pen. And the third base plate will be there. And over those base plates we are going to place our steel columns, of course. Okay. And let's draw our dashed and dotted line here. Okay, and let's write its name. This is the third drawing, and it's a section. And unfortunately, it doesn't have a scale. Okay, that's all, ladies and gentlemen. So I expect you to draw both the first and the second. Okay, just a second. I want you to draw all of the drawings. Okay, first option reinforced concrete structured substructure, basement floor. And the second option the uh, steel structured building, entirely steel structured building being placed inside a reinforced concrete pool like of a separate structure okay that's all for today uh, see you later bye bye